the things that I was always taught when I was younger was the three C's. Concentration, level when you go in the park. Confidence in your ability and the courage to use it. And that last one's the most important, the courage oh, to yeah. use your ability. I love that. It's, yeah, he who dares wins, isn't it? It's like you've got to dare to, to do it. Just go for it. Yeah, yeah. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to have confidence to say, you know, in your ability. And a lot of persons, confidence and ability, even young boys who were on the ground stuff with me, but some of them might not have the courage to go and do it in front of 30, 40, 50,000. I mean, when I first played, you know, you, you get cr crowds of 50,000 in Illinois. It's a big crowd and you've got to be able to cope with that. I mean, I made my debut when I was 17 yeah, against Sheffield Wednesday at Ellen Road. And there was a huge crowd at the game. But I was pretty fortunate. I was playing with decent players. We beat them 3 nothing, and I scored in the game. Now, that's a big boost for a young player. You win the game, not so much scoring, but being involved with a side that were good enough to go out and dominate mm -hmm. other teams, you know, wherever we played, even at home or away. Uh, and that's that's the one thing that I was always grateful for. You know, I, you know, people say to me the best moments of your career. Well, in a way, it was just sitting in the dressing room and looking around the dressing room and looking at the players I was playing with and just thinking to myself, well, there's no way we can get beat today. And that's a great feeling. I love it. Oh, wow. And I have to say, Ellen Road aren't the easiest crowd, are they? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, most crews are the same. <clears throat> most crews are the same. No, I think Ellen Road is, it, it, for young players, it can be a difficult place to play. Yeah. The, you know, the, 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 the crowd are hugely passionate about the club. Yeah. And the thing about the club as well, there's only one club in the city. So, you know, everything comes on to Leeds United with a footballing point of view. So if you play for Leeds United and it's not going well, you've got to expect a bit of a backlash. Yeah, and that's that. That just comes. That's the nature of the sport. Sure. Eddie, can I just go back to something you you were saying? We we're talking about. You said you with your brother. You knew from like a young age that yeah. that Frank was gonna yeah. be a great footballer. Yeah. And obviously nowadays the whole scouting network starts young. Yes. How important or not do you think it is for parents to kind of support that? So when you get told at whatever age, you know, six, seven, that we want you in an academy, we want your kid in the academy. Is that like what? Like, should parents be jumping on that bandwagon, thinking like this is an opportunity, let's just go for it, or is that still too early? Like, what, what are your thoughts? Well, it's, it's just how it happens now. You know, the kids go to the academy at seven or eight or whatever, um, and I think you just got to accept it if you're a parent, if your if your kids are good enough, and that's what you want and your kid wants. And, and most parents, they'll go along with what their kids want to keep them happy and see them happy. Mm. You know, if you know, if Leeds United or any big club come calling when you're seven or eight to go to the academy, very difficult to turn it down um, because that's that's where players are coming from. That, you know, as I said earlier, it was a little bit different for me. I just played schoolboy football all the way. That you know, I, I used to do a little bit of training at Celtic Park because it was a big Celtic fan. Uh, but as soon as I come down to Leeds, I realised that. Don Revy was the manager I wanted to play for. Leeds United were the club I wanted to play for. Even though they were in the old second division then, as it was. Uh, and I'd been to a few of the bigger clubs, you know, so-called bigger clubs then. Uh, the Arsenal, Manchester United, used to train at Celtic Park. But as soon as I came to Leeds and met Don Revy, uh, just how he approached the game, how he looked after young players, he set a standard that... I think was terrific. I mean, uh, the club had me a lot of money, but what he did was like he, he signed lots of the best schoolboy players in the country. That's what he's oh, done. Put all his efforts in uh, young players then, because he realised yeah. the club had the money mm -hmm. to go big in a transfer market. Mm -hmm. And you know, the chairman at the time, uh, Mr. Harry Reynolds, backed on to try and sign the best schoolboy players in the country. And Don did that. And that's why, you know, you get players like Peter coming through, Jimmy Greenoff, Paul Maidley, players like that, you know. I mean, there was a few established players there already, Billy Bremner, Norman. A lot of great players, by the way, talking about. But 
that Don Don was um, Don was very clever, but he was I think in a way when he was a young manager, he was fortunate that Mr. Reynolds backed him that way. Yeah. Not big money in the transfer market, but enough money so that he could go and sign the best young players in the country. Right, right, yeah. But you so but you were fifteen when you went into the professional setup, right? Yes. So I left think... home when I was fifteen. Right. So do you think they're different? Do you, like obviously there are still youngsters wanting yeah. to be professionals. They're not in an academy at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like what what do you think is the difference that allows them to still get there? Like and I know that the academies are where it's at and where you end up transitioning into it before going. Well, some, some, some boys, some boys, I mean, I think about it at that age, you know, when boys are seven, eight, the physical aspect can come in a lot. Mm. Some young boys, you know, don't grow to their 13, 14. Yeah. You know, but they'll have talent. But that talent might not shine through then because they're not physically strong enough. Uh, but once they get to a certain age and if they've got the talent, there's always an opportunity for them. And that's what football clubs do. I mean, obviously, they have academies for boys that come through for the ages of seven right through to the 16. Mm. But they'll always be looking for boys that mature a little bit later. Uh, the, when the, the younger, maybe you get young boys, they can play under 15 football when they're 12. When the other boys start to catch them up, that's when it actually tells who's going to be able to make it in the game and who isn't. And when you say talent, Eddie... Like when you look at a young player playing, what is it? Is it yeah, what are you? What do you? Is it skills? Because often they can be taught. You know, people pick those up, or is it a sort of intelligence? Or what would you? I remember uh, when I was younger, uh, not that young, but young enough, um, a young boy at the club. I was in the first team. A young boy at the club come up and yeah. says, "Quick tricks do you do?" I do day tricks. I play football. <laughs> or so uh, about that. No, well, I'm about step overs, football. then they'll. Yeah. I, I love I mean, that. Because that, that, that was, I just played football and I didn't do tricks. You know, sorry about that ringing now. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, people, you know, say I was a skillful player, but I hadn't ever practiced any skills. I never practiced how to dribble by somebody or anything like that. It was just, you know, something I could do. I mean, obviously, I, I worked hard physically to be a player. That was the, That's the one thing that I would say about my career. I don't take any credit for being able to play the game. I take credit for keeping myself fit to play the game till I was 37. So that's what I take credit for. And that's the thing about football. You can have all the talent in the world, but... That old saying never changes, you know. If you can't run, you can't play. And that's right. I'm not saying, I'm not saying run fast, but be able to get about the pitch. Some people are obviously quick and others. Got to be able to run about the football pitch for 90 minutes. Because the thing about football is the first thing it goes when you're physically tired is your concentration level. So if your concentration level is no good, you're going to make mistakes. So you, you've got to try and keep yourself physically in great shape to play 90 minutes. It may be 90 minutes plus another 30. You don't know. Mm -hmm. It depends what competition you're playing. So that's the one thing I would say to any young player. If mm -hmm. you've got the talent, make sure you work hard enough to do your challenge, your talent justice. Sure. How important is the other yeah. stuff? Right. So there's the physical stuff, the focus. How important is the, or for you back then, was things like, I don't know, diets, Sleep. Oh, you know well, about well, all that stuff? Is that well, 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 it's funny, you know. Uh, well, when I first came to the club, and Don Revy was the manager, and I was 15 when I came to the club, Don would have all the apprentices, and it's, it may sound silly, this, but this is how it was. This is Don doing something he thought made players phys no even physically stronger, but maybe mentally. We used to have to line out up outside his office, all the young players, three days a week. And you'd get into his office and he'd have a big tray of raw eggs and sherry. And he'd put sherry. a little drop of yeah, a little drop of sherry in, in the glass, put raw eggs in it, mix it up, and had to drink it in front of him. Says it built you up. Now, whether he did or no, whether he did or no, 
it's not that's and it used to give the steak to take it home to the digs three oh, times a week. Oh. Sometimes we never really seen the steaks. The landlady's the landlord. <laughs> and that's true. That's funny. But, but we used to have to do that with Don. Now Don might have been thinking to himself, this because Don was a great player, Don maybe was football of the year as well as being a great manager. He was footballer year for Manchester. Apparently, I spoke to a lot of players that played with Don. And even as a player, Don was way ahead of his time. Physical fitness, he was always thinking about things and, uh, you know, how I can get myself fitter. And he brought it in the management side of his game. And quite a lot of it. It's just psychological. You know, it's, it, it, it might not mean anything. It's sherry and egg. It's not going to do you that much good before you go for a training session. It probably even make you sick at times. It was his, that was his way to make you believe that this was making you physically stronger yeah. and you had an advantage over the opposition you were playing against, which is very clever, I think. Wow.